Many fear that intelligent machines will disrupt our social systems and bring about a dark, dystopian future. And if that's the case, then people will have to develop what I call social intelligence, which is human intelligence and creativity applied to social skills and systems. Because only then can we ensure that the machine age will benefit rather than harm humanity. In this current machine age, machine intelligence is slithering its way into all realms of life. Nowadays, we're using smarter algorithms to match us to better options for dining, dating, and binge-watching videos. And machines are also doing more sophisticated tasks like image and speech recognition. Meanwhile, companies are increasingly investing in machine learning and automation, like self-driving cars. And not too long ago, this AI called AlphaGo defeated a human world-class player on the board game of Go, which is known as one of the most complex intuitive games out there. Yet so far, we are a far cry from the badass intelligent agents of sci-fi fantasy. Yet some claim it's just a matter of time before super intelligent machines make humans obsolete. And that leads to all sorts of fears, like what if machines take our jobs? Or what if an aging population can't adapt rapidly enough and develop new skills at any age? Or what if we program poor algorithms that don't take into account unintended consequences? And how about autonomous drones and weaponized machines? So there's all sorts of pessimistic fears about intelligent machines. And a group of public intellectuals claim that this age of technological change is different from all the others. Whereas in the Industrial Revolution, machines replaced us for physical labor, this time, they say, machines are competing with us directly for jobs relating to cognitive functioning. So what will people do then? How will we find jobs? Will we have a whole class of useless masses? And that brings up questions about how we'll deal with vast unemployment when robots can do everything better than we can. One proposed solution is what's called a universal basic income, which is a program where we give everyone money regardless of work, essentially putting everyone on welfare. Perhaps then we can avoid a dystopian future of egregious poverty, and maybe we'll get a luxurious form of communism, unlike the genocidal versions of the past. But perhaps an even greater problem than widespread unemployment is how people without social intelligence will find meaning in their lives. Because finding meaning requires that we adapt to uncomfortable circumstances. We have to shift our perspectives, manage our emotions, ask new questions, and we have to find ways to deal with suffering when reality does not conform to how we want it to be. So if we believe that people will become so hopelessly dependent on machines, it makes me wonder how providing everyone with material income will solve the greater challenge of widespread depression. Will machines then swoop in and also cure us of our existential angst? Or maybe universal welfare will allow kept men and women to finally do things that they truly enjoy. But will that just create a society of narcissists and hedonists all focused entirely on themselves? And the research on unemployed men shows that they tend to drift to low performance. They tend to suffer depression, sit at home all day, develop chronic pain problems, and then they get addicted to opiates and video games. We're not going to find any real solutions to our problems until we recognize the importance of social intelligence and understand how humans and machines differ. Machines might be programmed to mimic our human traits in specific cases, but they don't actually understand them. And that's why I call machines the mechanical moron, because they don't form basic social understandings and they can't make simple decisions that even a young child can do. They also don't have a sense of ethics and they can only do a very narrow range of tasks well. But humans are conscious, complex systems, so we develop a uniquely human intelligence. Like our brains are not computers, because evolved systems like the brain have fundamentally different properties from design systems like computers. Design systems have convenient boundaries between the parts, so you can analyze a computer's transistor independently without having to understand how all the electrons work. But evolved systems perceive and react to their environments in ways that evolved naturally, not through human design. And they do that by relying on the local feedback mechanisms of the parts all interacting at once. And that local information exchange remains a black box to us. 
So we can't just analyze an evolved system by taking it apart, analyzing the parts independently, and then generalizing to the behavior of the whole. Because the very act of doing that already cuts those parts from the natural feedback connections to the greater environment. Mechanical morons excel at handling what's called detail complexity. So give it a bunch of numbers and some complicated equations and it's very comfortable crunching away. But it really flounders when it comes to dynamic complexity of any social system. These have many interacting variables, each with different goals. So just imagine the social dynamics of a classroom or even a workplace. When you throw messy humans together, you're gonna get a bunch of non-linear and unpredictable behaviors that machines do not do well in. And unlike computers, human brains don't store words nor the rules that tell us how to manipulate them in hard drives. Like you're not gonna find a copy of Star Wars anywhere in your brain, even if you love that movie. Because we don't take images, convert them into zeros and ones, store them into a short-term memory buffer, and then transfer them into a long-term memory device. Instead, we're born with reflexes, senses, and learning mechanisms. And if a baby lacked any of those capabilities at birth, it would probably have trouble surviving. But if you submerge a baby underwater, its reflex is to hold its breath. If you put an object in its hands, its reflexes is to grasp at it. Humans have creative power and imagination, so we create things that previously did not exist. We can write complex works of fiction, we can start and run businesses, we can perceive needs not currently being met, and we do all of that by perceiving from the infinite amount of data around us something not previously defined or determined relevant. Machines can't create because they don't have desires. They don't ruminate over finding a soulmate or yearn to go find their true calling. But humans have volition, so we set vision and we set goals. We can also have a burning desire for a particular future and then drop everything in pursuit of it. Machines can't have desires because they don't have emotions. You're not gonna see a machine get bored or show up to work with a bad attitude. It's also not gonna suddenly decide to quit to go pursue its true calling. Because without being directed, a machine doesn't know what's meaningful to work on. And there's this neuroscientist named Antonio Damasio who studied people that had damage in the part of their brain associated with generating emotions. And he found that they might seem normal and logical, but they couldn't even make simple decisions. So they might be able to describe what they should be doing logically, but they couldn't even decide what to eat. But the reason why they can't choose is that they haven't got this sort of lift that comes from emotion. It is emotion that allows you to mark things as good, bad, or indifferent, uh, literally in the flesh. Humans have empathy, so we understand what anger, love, grief in another person feels like. You can program a machine to recognize that certain facial cues moving in a particular pattern with associated brain activity correlates to this emotion variable called anger, but that machine does not feel anger. You've just programmed it to follow predefined rules and spit out a label. She's a kind of a receptionist uh, of this laboratory. Her job is to be a receptionist? That's, that's yeah, the function? Yeah, receptionist or secretary or something like that. Humans introspect, so we reflect on the experience of being alive, and we ask ethical questions, we form values, we ponder what it means to live a meaningful life, and we also understand all too well what it feels like to suffer. The machines don't have ethics, they just act toward programmed goals within programmed boundaries, and they follow programmed algorithms that just reflect the intelligence of their creators. So if the programmer has faulty ethics or biases or makes all sorts of errors, all of that seeps right into the code. Do you think the machines will win? No, human will win. They will? Oh yeah, absolutely. Machine is good in knowledge, but human beings are good at the wisdom. And so artificial intelligence will never have wisdom? No, no, no. We should view machines as tools rather than rivals, because technologies can often lift even the poorest out of poverty by granting access to things that only the elite of a prior era had access to, or inventing things that even the elites didn't have. A standard television set used to cost over $6,000 back in 1964. And back in the late 19th century, 
workplace fatalities were 30 times more likely than today, now that we have machines doing a lot more of the dangerous work. However, if we rely on machine intelligence but lack social intelligence, then we risk being very efficient at doing the wrong things. Because good problem solvers need to know what questions to ask, they have to be able to synthesize large amounts of noisy data, they have to make complex decisions, and they have to be flexible to adapt to unknown circumstances. So an over-reliance on machine algorithms can lead to a sort of linear tunnel vision that blinds us from seeing solutions to the greater social problems. And unfortunately, everywhere we look, we're going to find organizations that lack social intelligence in schools and hospitals and tech companies, and especially in bureaucratic government agencies. And nowadays, now that we have data overload, people are treating package data and fancy graphs as these sort of oracles. And that's replacing their ability to see nuance and form more complex understandings. So perhaps more concerning than the rise in machine intelligence is this rise in human stupidity. And we can't afford human stupidity because the machine age will eliminate many jobs. It will also create some new ones, but only for those who can adapt rapidly enough to change. Existing professions will have to shift their approaches. So doctors can rely on machines to do some of the more statistical work, like suggesting diagnoses, and then they can focus on the patient relationship. Teachers can rely on machines to deliver routine lesson plans, and then they can focus on social emotional development and personalizing the learning experience. So if you're willing to experiment and reinvent yourself, there will be so many opportunities. Artists nowadays can manage their careers much more independently. It's so much cheaper to create art, to market yourself, and then to publish to an online platform. And you can pretty much maneuver around film studios, book publishers, music labels, even the education establishment. And I can come up with a list of things that machines will not do well. Machines don't create art, they don't create new businesses, they can't find meaning for us, they can't come up with things to invent, they make poor spiritual teachers and awful comedians, and they can't run a business or a community or anything that requires managing people. A machine with just logic and facts will have a really hard time persuading, because persuasion requires appealing to emotions. A good lawyer has to persuade the judge and the jury. A good entrepreneur has to persuade potential customers that the product will satisfy an emotional need. Even finding relationships or romantic partners requires persuasion. So there will always be jobs that require persuasion and other social skills. A world where we don't require human labor or intelligence kind of implies a world with no human desires. But we don't have to look really far to see that humans don't have a shortage of desires. At the very least, we all desire to put an end to our suffering. So machines can help us get what we want, but they can't do the work of finding meaning in our lives for us. And no one knows what the future job market will look like, but we do know that the future will probably put a premium on social intelligence. So creative people will have to manage their careers independently and learn new skills at any age. Non-creative people might be in trouble though, because they can't just depend on these slow traditional schooling institutions. We're going to need new models for learning catered to different environments, different skills, and different ages. And workplaces will have to train their employees in social intelligence because machines will be doing the routine labor. Governments will have to remove obstacles that prevent people from transitioning careers or starting new enterprises. So we'll have to have social intelligence if we want to design systems that embrace change and support human advancement.